Sometimes you just want to do something nice for that special somebody. But maybe you don't want to spend $108.32. Maybe you want a fancy dinner for two for less than $15. restaurant that shan't be named, or many, if, if that, that have sort of a two for 20, right? Two meals, two great meals for $20. But I say we can beat that, and more specifically, and this isn't a but better, more specifically, date night is something that is commonly very expensive. But it doesn't have to be. If you go out and you get something for $40, which is 20 a person, and most people might say, oh, that's pretty good. But I really think you can have a three course meal for the prices previously described. Bink, bink, that price right there. And there's nothing really that fancy about it. You could take common ingredients, put them together, use some proper technique, and make a world-class meal. And that's the whole point of this series. Now there's three pieces to this meal, so I'm not gonna waste too much time here. So with all that said, let's do this, shall we? One second, one second. Uh, it's very late. I'm editing right now. I forgot to mention that Samsung and I are doing a giveaway of a TV and a barbecue stuff, and there'll be a link in the description. I'm also doing it on my Instagram story, so you can see it there. Anyway. Okay, so let's first start with our appetizer. Get a 10 inch skillet, add in three tablespoons or 42 grams of extra virgin olive oil, set that over medium heat until extremely hot, and dump in 10 ounces or 280 grams of whole grape tomatoes. You don't need to cut them, it's super simple. Now, if they don't start what's popping right away, then your gosh darn pan ain't hot enough, all right? Now keep cooking and stirring occasionally until they get a little charred and softened up. Three to five minutes. Then add three cloves of thinly sliced garlic, season lightly with salt and pepper, let that cook for about a minute, then turn off the heat, take it off the heat. So Lil Yachty on TikTok posted about this toaster and so I got one, I don't know, I don't know why. It's the most unnecessary toaster I've ever had. But anyway, go ahead and get two slices of good crusty bread in your toaster and get them nice and well toasted. Now for both slices, you'll need about a third a cup or 90 grams of ricotta divided evenly amongst the two. Top that with your nice garlicky plump juicy tomatoes. Hit it with some extra olive oil, optionally some flaky salt and black pepper, freshly cracked, and some fresh herbs for garnish if you want it to look extra pretty. Now with all this put together, if we're looking at just the serving cost because there's a lot of ingredients left over, that puts the total cost of this appetizer for both toasts at $3.94. Okay, so this is the appetizer. Now you eat it, thank you. <laughs> That's so good. You've got the sweet tomatoes, they're charred, they're blistered, they're soft, but they still have some texture. It's garlicky, you've got the olive oil, the ricotta, there's so many textures, perfectly satisfying. Okay, so now we're on to the main course. Surely it doesn't cost less than $7 for two plates of this. Well, you're about to have your pancakes flipped and don't call me Shirley. So you need to start with some chicken leg quarters, which is literally just the chicken drumstick plus the thigh attached. You're gonna take a nice sharp knife, run along the length of the center of the thigh to reveal the thigh bone, then down the drumstick to reveal the drumstick bone. And now you can kind of see that these two pieces are connected by those bones. To first remove the thigh bone, now it's everything's still attached, but you're just kind of getting the thigh bone detached. Then repeating with the drumstick bone. Now, once you can get your knife underneath the drumstick bone, I recommend slicing and cutting down just before you get to the end of the drumstick so it separates like this. And yes, my freshly sharpened boning knife did just shave that wood cutting board. Now all that's keeping it attached is the cartilage and the joint in the center of these two pieces. Carefully cutting that piece out, removing as little meat as possible. And now you have a boneless chicken leg quarter. Now you only need two of these, but a package of five costs about $3, which makes it $1.20 for two. Now to each of these, you're gonna add two teaspoons or three grams of whole grain mustard, a little bit of salt to taste, a slice of Swiss cheese, and four to five basil leaves. Then carefully roll your chickeny blanket all the way up to lock in that stuffing. Then use pieces of kitchen twine. Tie your chicken together at three to four even intervals. So now you kind of got like a little miniature roast. Repeat with your other chicken thigh. I have three here because, well, I wanted an extra piece, but. Fill a large skillet with a couple tablespoons of oil, enough to coat the bottom. Heat that over medium high heat until nice and hot. Pat your meaty fruit roll ups dry. Season generously with salt. Add in your chicken and sear on every side for about two minutes just to get a little bit of color. Now you don't want to brown this all the way because you're going to turn them back over facing the skin side up and placing your skillet into the oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 20 minutes or until cooked all the way through and the skin is nice and perfectly brown and crisp. While that's cooking, we're gonna make a very easy cauliflower puree. Separate the florets from a medium head of cauliflower and add them to a small pot of boiling water. Just boil that for about eight to 10 minutes or until very, very, very soft. I want it mushy. It's okay if it's overcooked, that's the point. Strain that through a fine mesh sieve 
into a bowl but reserve the water. Now place that cauliflower into a blender, season it to taste with salt, and a quarter teaspoon of fresh grated nutmeg or ground nutmeg, which costs nearly nothing if you already have it, but if you don't, then forget about it. And begin blending, adding just a little bit of water to loosen, just until it begins to blend. We're not making a soup once it starts to vortex. Then add three and a half tablespoons or 50 grams of unsalted butter to your blender while continuously blending about a tablespoon at a time until all of your butter is added and is emulsified in, and you should end up with a beautifully smooth and creamy color cauliflower puree. Now we're going to make kind of a chimichurri. Serve with a quarter cup or five grams of fresh chopped parsley, one red fresno chili very finely chopped. I know we're, we're stacking price here now. Gotta be careful. The zest and the juice of one lemon and six cloves of garlic grated and cover with a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of olive oil. Now the pricing on olive oil really varies depending on what you buy. So if you buy really cheap stuff, then it's going to be cheaper. So this is just an estimate. Season that to taste with salt and pepper. Mix that together until thoroughly combined and you're ready to roll. So to plate this up, it's very simple, all right? Don't be a scaredy little baby. So first thing, take your chicken, take off the twine. Now I like to cut the ends off so the pieces stand up properly, but you don't have to do that. Then slice this into three evenly sized rounds. Pick a nice looking plate, add a thick dollop of your cauliflower puree. Take the back of your spoon and slide it across the plate to create a nice little swoosh. Add your three rounds facing up so you can see that nice little coil on the inside. And then optionally, you can garnish it with more sliced Fresno chilies or parsley. Spoon on your chimichurri as much as you like. Optionally garnish with parsley and bone apple the teeth to you. That puts two of these beauties at $6.88. Wine time. You gotta cleanse the palate. Course cool. number two, which is, well, really just the entree. Chicken thigh Valentine, cauliflower puree, chimichurri, red fresno, yummy yum sauce. Now you put it in your mouth. Okay. Share a fork? Yeah, we're, yes. <laughs> this slaps. The benefit of this series is like, you get to watch and you're like, oh, I'm gonna have a little date night with my girlfriend. But guess what? Mm -hmm. I have to let this stuff sit down and get cold for you. It ruins my date night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is very good. 10 out of 10. I would eat this again. No idea how good this was. Vikram Teller. It was so good. Thank Enjoyed you, Vikram. Of course. Vikram, join our date night. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> On to dessert. Get yourself a 10 inch skillet, unnecessarily and aggressively toss in a quarter cup or 56 grams of unsalted butter. Place that pan into an oven set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius until melted. But while that's going, peel two Bosque pears. Then cut them in half and scoop the core out as best you can. Once the butter in your pan is melted, sprinkle on one cup or 225 grams of brown sugar. A small pinch of salt, give a little shake to see that it's not going anywhere. That's for fun. Place your pears in the pan cut side down and place back in the oven for 25 minutes. By then, your sauce should be bubbling and melting. Once that 25 minutes is up, baste each pair every two minutes for 10 minutes. Pull out your hot saucy boys. Pull out a nice looking plate, and then using a single serving of unflavored yogurt, add a little smear on the bottom of the plate, add one of your pear pieces cut side down, spoon on your caramel sauce, and optionally you can top with granola or nuts or whatever crunchy thing you have in your pantry that makes sense on this. Maybe not fried onions, that'd be weird. Or would it? Fried onions or not, two of these plates combined sit at $4.09. Let's give this a taste. Caramel pears with yogurt, pecans, and obviously a caramel glaze. Basic, simple, yet beautiful. That's Get my, the right attitude. That's my cue. Yeah, you give it a little. That's really good. You got a sticky lacquer on the outside of the pear. The inside of the pear is still moist and has some texture to it. It's not total mush. It's refreshing, it's rich, it's everything you want. A nice. But do you want to know what else is refreshing and rich? B-roll. We made a three-course meal. It was about this amount of money because I don't know yet, because I'm recording this before I did the math, and Josh is not very good at math. This is a, this is one of those moments where you're like, oh yeah, I would pay $40 for that, or I would pay $80 for that. The actual ingredient cost cut it down all the way. This is really emphasizing the butt cheaper series, the importance of understanding this. Make these recipes, they will be happy, and they're gonna be like, man, you're a boss. This must have cost you a lot of money, but it didn't, and that's the whole point. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video, or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. And also, I know people are complaining that you're not back in the cabinet. I'm just trying to diversify. If you want to go back in the cabinet, let me know in the comments below. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Oh, my God.